Hey everybody, welcome to listen. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to listen with Tania and Win. Woo, thank you for joining us on another Tuesday night. <laughs> um, for those that don't know who we are, we'll take a quick second just to introduce ourselves. So I am Tania Easterling coming to you live from the Southwest coming to you live from Austin, Texas. And I am blessed to be the cousin sister to... I am the cousin sister. <laughs> I had to figure out which way I was pointing. <laughs> right? I'm Wynn Briscoe, her cousin sister, and I'm coming to you live from Maryland. Yes. And I'm your amazing producer, generally behind the scenes, but today you have me on camera again. I don't know why you all let them keep doing this to me. Um, anywho, this is my sister, Wynn, and my cousin, Tania. And hey, I'm so we want to thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you have your notifications turned on on our Facebook page so you know every single time we go live. Facebook will send you that pop-up notification and you won't miss a beat of all the craziness we will have to say. So <laughs> thank you for all the shares, for all the comments, even during the lives and the replays. Oh my goodness, you all's comments, right, Wynn? Just the feedback. Listen, I love going back and reading the comments after the show. Yes. You all make my night. I'm serious. I, there's, I don't even log off until after I've gone through it, at least, you know, given a reaction to some of the comments. Thank you all so much. You all are such faithful listeners, as we call yes. you, um, because your comments are so deep. It's just like, oh, my God, they're hanging in there with us with these deep comments. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And if and if at any time anything we say ever goes like whoosh, hit us up let us know because we're all we're all learning none of us have arrived none of us are perfect and we love to help everyone understand and bring understanding so yeah but thank you like when said to just every listener we so love and appreciate you uh for coming back for our second season of obedience so last week when last mm -hmm. week What was last week's topic? Tell everyone what last week was. My goodness. So last week we talked about, you know, and, and y'all, if y'all do, do not know if this is your first show, let me just preface this. Okay. All of our show topics start with the letter F so far so from far. season one and now into season two. So episodes three uh, last week, um, and we talked about the show. Re oh my goodness. I'm looking right at my script and I'm like, I don't even see. It is fear, fear, fearless. Oh my God. How did my mind just drew a blank? Fearful versus fearless. And so if you all haven't seen that, um, please take the time to go back. It was perfect for Halloween week um, yeah. to really with that fear theme and to just embrace, you know, the bedfellows. Look at some of those identifications there. You may say, well, I don't have a fear base. Uh, personality or fear-based emotion, but when you go back and look at some of the bedfellows that we put in the comments um, of fear, yeah, right, um, right, you know, right on down to procrastination and doubt and worry, right, control, anxiety, right, all of the all the words that we're familiar with that were bedfellows to fear. So, yes, that was yeah. last week. So I encourage you all to become fearless and let the fear go. Yeah, and then the week before that, we did uh, financial aid with our amazing show producer, <laughs> uh, who is gifted in financial aid wisdom. And so if you haven't had a chance to check that out, that was episode two for season two. So you can catch everything we're talking about on the Facebook page on the replay, at least for right now. So don't yeah. procrastinate on it. If there's something you know you need to be watching or something you want to catch, try to catch that. And all of season one is still on there for yeah. right now, for right now. So 
I feel like Winnie loves to say bedfellow, so we're definitely going to keep that theme going on today. <laughs> well, you because know? I feel like people may not relate directly to the topic. They may say, well, that's not applicable to me, right? Um, but when you understand what a bedfellow is, it means these are similar words or emotions or actions right alongside what we're discussing. So it may not be that exact topic, but trust me, tonight, you going you gonna have some bedfellows tonight too. We may need to make it a drinking game. Every Ooh. time we say a certain word, maybe we need to take a sip or something because Damn. I feel like tonight's topic. <laughs> huh. We trying to make it through the show, Danielle. We're trying to make it through the show. Let it be known the producer made the suggestion. I'm just, just saying want it to be known. <laughs> We can we can jazz it up a little bit. It I'm wasn't just, the crazy ooh. cousin that, that made ooh. the suggestion. Tonight's <laughs> topic, y'all. Perfect segue. <laughs> Speaking of tonight, mm -hmm. tonight's topic. So if you've been seeing any of our Facebook posts, I know you're like, okay, that is what? a totally made up word, and you're right. Well, in the dictionary, it's, not really. yeah. it's an actual word. <laughs> it about is. Things. It's okay. a real word about fake things. Okay, so we'll give it that. But it's not a word you typically hear every single day in, in our vernacular, using big mm -hmm. words tonight. So tonight's topic is on fakeries. Honey, Woo! and you know it's real if it's, if it's, <laughs> if it's, in, if it's in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And right. Scrabble will permit it because you know Scrabble is the is the That's word. The final say so. That's the Come it's on. A, if it's a Scrabble word, then it's a real word. We can so, use it. Tonight it's all about the fakery. That's what it's all about, honey. Ooh, so strap in, get mm. ready to have a conversation with us. Join mm. in if there is any questions, if there's if anything is resonating with you, even if you disagree. Put it in the comments. We 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 got tough skin. We can handle it. <laughs> and we love the dialogue and we love to conversate. And everybody doesn't have the same opinions or the same beliefs. And right. that's okay. This show embraces that. So put it all in the comments. Put it all out there. Let us know how you're feeling. Right. And we'd love to engage. So and ooh, let's up. dive in. What you say, Danielle? And buckle up. I mean, buckle up, buttercup, okay? And we apologize in advance for those of you that are already offended. We, yeah, we sorry, not sorry. We sorry, hope you become, not hope you become delivered from the spirit of offense, because it's a spirit also. It is. It All is. Right. <laughs> so, ooh, so definition. When you mm. want to give everybody the definition of well, bakery. this is one of many definitions, but govern yourselves accordingly to your own dictionary. <laughs> All right, fakery, the act of faking or the product of faking. Okay, mm. dissimulation, deception, dissembling, deceit, the act of deceiving. That is just one of the many definitions of fakery. Okay. That that is a lot in that short definition. Exactly. So the act of faking. Come on. Or the product of faking, meaning it could even be the end result of the faking. result of you being a faker. Right. Absolutely. Is fakery. Is faker. It's all fakery. <laughs> right. <laughs> so dissimulation. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Deception. I mean, dissembling, deceit, mm -hmm. and the act of deceiving. I mean, how many of y'all know people in the act of deceiving? Well, <laughs> it's a whole lot of that, which we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> so some synonyms, some beautiful synonyms mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. AKA bedfellows. Say it, baby. <laughs> you want to share what those are, Danielle? After your sip. <laughs> Come on with the bedfellows. <laughs> See, you keep saying it. <laughs> the synonyms of fakery. Yes. Um, artifi artificial, cheating, craftiness, 
crookedness, crooked, crookedry, cunning, cunningness, deceit, deceitfulness, deception, a uh, dishonesty, dissimulation, double dealing. There's a double D for you. Double mm -hmm. dealing. Right. Dupery. Hmm. Fraud. Hmm. Ooh, I know some That's just ones. a few. Mm -hmm. That's just a few. And then in case you're still saying, well, I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> Let's yeah. give them some words even related to fakery. So how's about fraudulence, mm -hmm. trickery, falsehood, untruth, hypocrisy. Come on. Insincerity, two facedness, two facedness. I'm gonna repeat it. Shadiness, my favorite word, sneakiness, and stealthiness. Mm. Whew. Mm -hmm. Well, we can like end we the show right on that. That's, that's the whole show right there. We good. We just read <laughs> definitions and Only. synonyms. Right. 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 Okay. So as part of one of the beautiful missions and visions of this show, right, is that we are always real and relevant. So tonight we are coming at you with this topic from mm -hmm. only a real and relevant standpoint, not judging, not accusing, just real and relevant. And as we always love to be, we are going to be real and relevant with God intertwined. So. We can't bring this topic without bringing a quick scripture to it. And yes, we found scripture with the word fake. Come on. In it. And I love, y'all know I love my different um, translations. translations. But the message version, which some people would contest, eh, it's not really a translation. But you know what? It, Message gets about as real as it gets. Yeah, it's the Urban Bible Dictionary. It is, honestly. <laughs> Closest thing we got to an Ebonics Dictionary. I mean, Ebonics Bible. So Romans 12 and 9, y'all, says, love from the center of who you are. Don't mm -hmm. fake it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> that speaks volumes. Because Paul wrote, love from the center of who you are and don't fake it. Right. Right. Then Proverbs 21 and 29, still in the message. Unscrupulous people fake it a lot. Hmm. Honest people are sure of their steps. Hmm. Right. Honest people are sure of their steps. It's the unscrupulous that fake then the last one, whew, this was Jesus himself. Come on. Matthew 24, 24 through 25. Fake messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Their impressive credentials and bewitching performances will pull the wool over the eyes of <laughs> even those who ought to know better. But I've given you fair warning. I need to get a clock on one of these walls. <laughs> so I can just say, look at the time. Look at the time. <sighs> mm. Yeah. I love that there was the word fake in God's word. I love that. And I'm sure there were many other synonyms to the word fake all throughout, right? The falsehood. And everything, but I love that tonight God gave us a scripture that dealt with preachers in the church, right? Dealt with in the church, dealt with in life, right? At our core, love from the center of who you are, don't fake it. Mm -hmm. And then in our relationships with other people. Come on, come on. Did he not give us the layers? He did. Come in on. every facet of our lives. Yeah. In the horizontal and the vertical. Yeah. yeah. So, ooh, so let's let's just dig in. So mm. 
Why, mm-hmm. ladies, is it easier to show the world a facade than our real selves? Wow. Hmm. Let's just talk about the self part. I love the deep breaths. <laughs> For those of you all that might not have your microphones and speakers, your speakers up, you all might not be able to hear the level of deep breathing that we have, that we are sharing among ourselves. But just know uh, there will be a lot of rocking. There will be a lot of pregnant pauses um, and deep yeah. breaths. And purposeful breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is one of those topics. Um, that the questions, Tania, the questions, uh, the discussions. Why is it easier to show the world a facade than our real selves? My Lord. Because um, we want to be accepted. Not only I that, that, but that's like for a lot of people, that's their first hmm. initial choice is because I want to be accepted. So the so the fear of rejection is what you're saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather I'd rather assimilate mm-hmm. um than than show people how authentic I am and how beautiful God made me just as I am. Mhm. Mhm. Interesting. And to accept that how God made me mm. would intertwine with how God made you. Like we would still complement each other. We can be different. Right. And still right. compliment one another because that's how God does. That's how He is. So, what's the hesitation in truly showing our real selves? It, if it's fear based of rejection, if it's not wanting to not fit in, um, if it's compromising yourself and possibly your integrity, right? The things that make you authentic. It's very interesting. Well, I would say people really don't want to do the work. And mm-hmm. so it's easier to perpetrate on mm-hmm. something that you see or something that you want to be or assimilate to be um, instead of being your authentic self, because that's what you feel like other people want instead of actually doing the work to be and appreciate the process. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so, of course, it's the e- it, it's the easy route. And we live in a microwave society where you know everything is instantaneous or you know you want the clout or the fame or the you don't want to put in the actual work in a in a relationship and uh, for yourself just in general so it's it's e- it's the easy route and you're right we live in a microwave society but we also live in a copycat society it's mm-hmm. like nobody even wants to be original anymore you know, mm-hmm. everybody wants to sound like everybody else. Everybody wants to dance like everybody else. Everybody wants to live life like everyone else. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, when when are you going to be authentically you? Correct. Because you're gonna be dead and gone before you actually get the chance to let the world see mm-hmm. what you what you really look like, what you really bring to the table. This right? Is true. It's true. It's true. Do we even know the real, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. after the makeup and the weaves and the wigs and the and exactly. two sets of eyelashes and everything you know, is matched off, then maybe, then maybe, you know, and no shade on that. Everybody do what they need to do to beautify themselves. But mm-hmm. like, oh, we don't talk about it tonight. But ask yourself, where is that coming from? Where is that need coming from? Mm-hmm. You know, because we are all beautifully and wonderfully made. Mm-hmm. Real just talk. The way we are just the way we are. So yeah, mm-hmm. what else? What else we chatting about tonight with this fakery? Social media. Mm-hmm. Why is it so acceptable to fake it on social media, in the workplace, and in life in general? Mm-hmm. What is that about? It's. I think this is social media and. It, it's not real life. Some people mm-hmm. act it for it. For some people it is, but it's just another means of becoming someone or doing or, or copycatting and just being an alter ego of someone other than yourself 
mm-hmm. who you don't like or you're not accepted with that person. So you per- perpetrate and be someone else. And it go and <laughs> that's not just on social media. Wow. We we have people that live that daily. And that's sad. Absolutely. 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 When you, when it said in the workplace, I thought about that. Like over the years, how many people do we know in the workplace um, where they are? Is one thing where you're professional at work and you let your hair down outside of work. Sure. That's that's another thing of authenticity sure. and professionalism. But there are some that we know. I mean, it's like who? What life are you living? Right. Um, and you and you know for a fact, and they know for a fact that you know for a fact <laughs> that, that there are different people inside of you. <laughs> okay, it could be yeah. something as so simple as them even perpetrating to get the job. I mean, I mean everyone yeah. puts on a, a a good face in an interview, but mm-hmm. when you actually get to being hired and and you're supposed to know your job and do things um, that the job description entails. And Man. you don't even know how to do those. I mean, we we can't we can't continue to live a life of deception. I feel it's, like social media has helped to fan the flame, if you will, to yeah. fakery, to fakery, you know, to where people are like, well, I won't get I won't get the likes and I won't get the comments and I won't get you know, the sponsors, if I'm my true authentic self, Hmm. you know, I have, I have to portray this image, right? This image, I have to portray this image. That's so interesting. What compels that? Maybe that's another question for later on, but something to think about, right? What is compelling that? Mm. Greed, pride. Mm Mm-hmm. I can go on and on about that one. Oh yeah, that's a deep shame, dive. Shame, you're ashamed mm-hmm. of your authentic self. Mm-hmm. You're not mm-hmm. even proud to be how mm-hmm. God made you and who God mm-hmm. made you to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the name of you. <laughs> Just a few. Why yeah. do people say fake it till you make it, but they get upset when they realize they're surrounded by unauthentic people? Mm-hmm. Because that phrase should be a curse word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That whole well, fake it till you make it. No, absolutely. No, you hear no. it all the time, right? And you're thinking, well, why? What is first of all? What is the make it? I've always wondered that. We're faking it to make it. What is the make it? Well, I I I don't all the way agree. I feel like when you so, sometimes if you're thrown into a situation to play it cool or to learn, sometimes you can't react, right? You ha- whenever you're sometimes in a situation, you have to be observant. You have to feel the surroundings, of, you know, t- before you act or say. So I think sometimes faking it till you make it will allow you to really take in the situation or the scenario and before you react, having a more calculated decision base or reaction versus, um, Because sometimes, as we even say with God, it's a chess move. Sometimes you can't let everybody know your hand up front or you can't just react. So I will say sometimes you may want to just fake it, not fake it, but figure out the situation before you play your hand or your cards. And see, I feel I feel like that phrase, the because the word fake is in it, it puts a negative connotation to the right. phrase because I hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But we shouldn't be even faking in that if we're going to pause, mm-hmm. if we're going to observe, like you said, right? Mm-hmm. Then right. there should be even no shame in speaking up and saying, hey, I'm just observing right now. Or I'm I don't just, know. Or I'm just right? processing. Or I'm just processing. Right. I'll get back to you on that. Let me let me process. 
Let me just let me let that marinate for a minute, right? Yeah. To but just say this is an area that I don't I don't have you know information or education or training in, right? Mm-hmm. Just being transparency to say I don't know, versus acting as if you do, okay, uh, which can be a detriment to you further down the road because if someone assumes that you are informed or has a skill set, uh, and then they call upon that, then what do you do, right? Yeah. It's just so much easier to just honestly be transparent and say, you know what? I'm not sure, but I, let me find out. Let me do mm-hmm. some research, right? Let me call some people who who have this knowledge or experience and ask them. That's right. that's the more honorable approach. Yeah, truly. It's I I because I agree with Danielle. It's just, but unfortunately, that word at the front of that phrase, the yes. face. Yes. Fake it until you make it that fake. It's like, no, we don't want to, we don't want to fake. Mm-hmm. We want right. to be genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to be and should want to be genuine in all that we do. You know, and in all that we say. Right. So, yeah. But to your question, when about why do people get upset <laughs> when they yeah. then end up being around non-authentic people? Right. Because, again, like attracts light. So if you now have emotions, tendencies, behaviors of fakery, okay, um, whether it's with all good intentions or not, you're going to attract people who have that same energy. Right. And so now you're going to wake up one day, look around you and realize that your circle is full of fakeries. And you're gonna be like, how did I get here? Mm-hmm. Right, versus a circle that is transparent and genuine because Correct. you are part of that circle being transparent and genuine right along with them. So when yeah. they ask you, hey, how are you doing today? You're not giving them the church answer. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm good. I'm blessed mm-hmm. and highly favored of the Lord, which <laughs> that, that is a legit, that is a legit thing. Um, we're not downplaying that phrase at all. When it's but, used in the right context. Right. But speaking Christianese, right? Mm-hmm. Speaking that Christianese, instead of just saying, you know what, today's not a great day. I'm okay. really struggling today. You know, mm-hmm. or uh, I'm really upset today. So to me, being that genuine welcomes welcomes the genuine across the board. Right? Mm-hmm. So that person then feels, oh, that person is safe. This friend of mine is safe because they can handle right. when they ask me, how are you today? And I say, and they say back to me, uh, it's not a good day, mm. you know, and they're, they're not going to receive the judgment, the judgmental right. attitude, you know, of, well, you're, you're a believer, you're a Christian. You should never be, da, 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 da. you should never be sad. You should never be upset. <laughs> real emotions, honey. These are real emotions. Jesus and himself. Are real had. people. Come on. I mean, going I mean, through real things. Jesus did not flip the tables in joy. Come <laughs> on. He flipped those tables because he was hot. <laughs> well, speaking of God, right? Why do people even try and be fake with God? Like, like for real? Like, don't you think he knows who and what your he created your emotions in the first place? The audacity that you think that you can disguise, hide, fake withhold, change up the dubery, the fakery of it all in front of God. Really? Talk about, talk about blasphemy, though. Because I'm sure God is sitting there with his arms folded on the throne like, really? Come on. Are you trying, are you, you trying to fake this thing with me? Mm, mm, you mm. trying to fake this thing with, with me, of all people. Of all, thank you. Of thank all you. people that aren't even people. Like, I'm, I'm not even... <laughs> <laughs> like of all beings, of the all audacity, beings. come you know, on. Um, your, your creator mm. come knows on. how many hairs are on your head. The one person you should be able to be naked and, and true transparent with in all areas of your life. Yeah. And you have been trying to fake before God. Who do you think you're kidding? Well, maybe they think they're kidding God. 
as we all may face it on that. <laughs> it's like, who else? Who else? Deep breath. Deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. No, sir. It's not happening. But in the no. long run, they're just hurting themselves. Correct. And I really like I think that's the biggest thing that I really want our listeners to understand is that this is all just hurting your your own self. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, once once things come to light and it's fine, you know, sometimes we all have to do a mirror check. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's just, you know, hindering the bigger blessings, the bigger things that God has in store for you. And it's the reality that God can't even use us mm -hmm. if, if we're not willing to be who he created us to be. Come on that. Because how, how can he use us when we're in our fake state? He's like, I can't, I can't even, what am I supposed to do with that? Come on. <laughs> You're just going to remain on the potter's wheel. You're just going to be spinning. It's just gonna be spinning because that's all I can do with you is just keep letting you spin until mm. until you want to be authentic with me and okay. say, you know what, God, use me as you as you created me. All my all my quirks, all my mm. goofiness, you know, all my emotions, all of that, right? Yeah, mm. it can't even use us until we're willing to be truly authentic with Him. Correct. Correct. That comes with surrender. And releasing yeah. our will and our control, um, ultimately, to, you know what, God, just use me in the brokenness, right? Because everyone has a has an area of brokenness. We're yeah. still literally in process, right? And so it's just about being vulnerable, transparent, and honest to say, you know what, I surrender my will to you. Because obviously, you know better than I do, clearly. So why am I still here trying to fake this? Mm. Mm. Where am I, where are we getting with that? Really? You can't, you can't, you can't even, God can't even use it as a testimony in your life. Mm -hmm. Like you said, if, if you have, if you've experienced brokenness, then how are you going to help someone that's going through it? If you're not willing to be transparent and say, you know what? I've been there. Right. I know what you're feeling. And you don't have to share all the gory details all the time of what you've gone through, right? Everything is in wisdom and on a need to know basis. But to but to sit there on a high horse or on a pedestal and be mm -hmm. like, well, hmm, yeah. I, I don't I can't I can't relate to what you're feeling. It's like, okay, really? God wouldn't have sent that person to you mm -hmm. and had you cross their path if he didn't know he had already put something in you to relate to what they're going through. Listen, because that is the master strategist right there. That's the chess player on the board saying, I know who you need to intersect with. My you need goodness. to intersect with Tania. You need to intersect with Lynn or Danielle, because I've already allowed them to walk through what you're walking through right now. Mm, mm, mm. And they're going to be transparent and they're going to be real. So speaking of real. All right, y'all, y'all buckled in because this question Oh, she's taking a long she said, I know that was a long one. <laughs> Judge yourselves. But it's, Judge yourselves. It segues <laughs> right from what we were just talking about, about fake in the church. Come on. Versus true transparency and honesty. Mm, mm, mm. There's that pregnant pause and the exhale and all of that. The look away. We uh, all, all have been in the church for so long, so we can speak from experience. Let's just put that out there. We're not judging. We're not talking mm -hmm. about anything that we don't know or don't yes. know anything about. Yes. We've seen it. We've lived it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got the t-shirt. Mm. I mean, I can remember, you know, old church mothers from back in the day looking down on young women that were deemed as being promiscuous, you know, or having children out of wedlock or this and that, sitting and judging. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From a pedestal rather than taking two seconds to think about the grace of God over their own lives. Man. <laughs> And that if God ever was to show the Polaroids from their time, would they have ever been able to say, well, not me, you know, clutching their pearls? Well, never not me, you know. And to me, that's the that's the sad part of the church and mm -hmm. how it struggles to impact the generations and to be the example that we're called to be is because we're not willing to welcome that person with open arms and be like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I've been where you are, or I was this close to where you are, and but for the grace of God. <laughs> mm. You know, and to find that type of honesty and transparency in a church. Honey, disclaimer, this may not be in all churches. This right. might not be in churches that have raisins and potato salad, but I'm just letting you know, it's, it's in cultural, some of the cultural churches of our past. We don't want to, all of our viewers might not be able to have that relation. Don't want to assume, want to be clear. Right. What we're speaking from are our experiences from our culture to be clear, everybody might not have had that experience. However, comma, if you are from our culture and you have had that experience or similar experiences, put it in the comments because we'd love to hear your feedback. Mm -hmm. Continue. <laughs> so I know you, Wynn, had a couple of things you wanted to share with our listeners about some of the things that are done that have been done traditionally for years, right? Mm. But they have fake roots. Yes, that's a little bit in the I got questions, but I'm gonna touch on it in this you segment. Touch on it, touch on it. I'm gonna touch on it. Oh, I'm a, we gonna touch on it. We gonna <laughs> well, they're, they're examples. So that it really does also, you know, help, with, help with our listeners kind Absolutely. of understand better what we're talking about. Right. What we, and we're going to come back on what Tania was talking about, because I, I really, I don't want to glaze over that, right? Of fake in the church versus truth transparency. L let's finish that because I think that from us being birthed on pews, as Tania says, um, we experienced fake in church every time the doors was open, right? right. Every time, <laughs> every time. And so be it unto them who always had a double standard, who always um, selectively chose scriptures to uphold their stance um, and used the word of God to condemn people who they felt didn't measure up or meet um, their expectations or didn't feel that the, what they were doing um, was of God, but what someone else was doing, you know, you, you know what I mean? The hypocritical double standard um, was amazing to me. As Tania stated about the, the amount of church mothers who could pray down fire. Yeah. Wore white on Sunday. Okay, you couldn't see their ankles. You know who I'm talking about. Okay. The majority, I'm not saying all correct. Right. Hear me? Majority right. Right. had multiple baby fathers and children out of wedlock. And so what I'm asking is, how are we looking at one sin over another sin? Over another sin. I want to know. I want to know, right? The the same people who are high on a horse with one sin were always condemning another sin. Please don't even get me on the subject of homosexuality. I will fist fight you straight up. Because until you can show me where, where your sin outweigh that sin, when you get to heaven, 
if you haven't gotten this memo, I'm going to let you know right now. The Bible says God judges all sins accordingly. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to understand. You got a problem with that. I'm not here to talk about your problems with certain sins. I'm here to ask you, how are we cherry picking sins? That's all I want to know. When okay. Jesus himself said, let him that is without sin pass the first stone. That's, that's and all that, I'm asking. And that was a rhetorical statement from him. Because he was like, in in my in my uh, Ebonics Bible, it would have said, and by the way, I'm the only one that can throw the first stone. Because <laughs> I'm the only one on this, on this planet Come on. without sin. You know? And... As he said to the woman who was there with him, look around. Where they at? Where, who brought you here? Uh, right. Right? And based on that story, it says that Jesus wrote something in the and, ground. Um, and on. we don't know what he wrote, but. but honey, honey. I have honey. always surmised. I wonder if he wrote their sins in the same. Ma'am. It and never he said out there on blast wrote. and was like adulterer. Come on, fornicator. <laughs> here's the real. You can't Pardon bring me. her before God and say she's committing adultery by what? By herself? Boo boo, go ahead somewhere. She was with you. Get the get up out of here, okay? Get, ma'am. How about them apples? Hmm. <laughs> this is what gets me about church folk. It it saddens me to even be talking about this because I know, I know, like in my knower, I know this world would be so on fire for God mm -hmm. if us as believers were willing to be transparent yes, and honest and in that love mm -hmm. from that space and love from that mm -hmm. place of, you know what? I'm not perfect either. Right. You know right. what? Maybe I did just cuss at the person driving next to me because they cut me off. Listen, maybe I did. look, maybe I did. <laughs> we talked about that coming out of the daggone worship concert on Sunday. You want to see how Christians act from three hours of corporate worship? Get right. in the parking lot. OK, let's talk about it. The truth of the church. Yeah. Yeah. And and just how how beautiful and how different this world would be. Mm. And just I, acceptance. Accepting people yeah. for who they are, no matter what, and just moving forward from that. It mm. it doesn't make a, you know, what daddy say, a hell of beans sometimes as to what they've gone through, what they're going through, but out of that love and out of the casting those fakeries aside. To understand that there's a person in there, there's a human being in there that they've been through things too, and so yeah, it is more of the genuine spirit and the loving spirit that that is needed in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the it's remembering that that's how God receives us. Correct. He receives us right where we are, all day, mm -hmm. every day. He Can says, you "Come as you are." If, that's if that's the what he good tells Lord us. Him Self took us as we take other people. Could you imagine? No, no, <laughs> goodness, no. Come on. So I didn't want to glaze over this because this is this is so critical of how, um, in my personal opinion, and again, this is not reflective of the show. This is Wynn's personal opinion. The majority of fakeries I have experienced in my life have been in church or church folk just keeping it real that was that was my first experience and so i had to learn honestly coming from a childhood to a young adult to an adult to an established in my own life i had to go through some trauma in order to really get a deep established relationship with God that separate God from all of the other mm -hmm. that was the experience prior. They mm -hmm. are two very different things. And so unfortunately, 
truly being disciples and really bringing people to God when we are, that's one of our calls in this life, right? Right. Um, it's, It's difficult to do that when you have so much fakery as people's experience and what they see as a societal norm and what their past experiences have been. Um, how do you say to someone, well, that's not how God is when that's been their only experience, right? Is is humans on this earth, right? Who who proclaim to be Christ followers. And this is the only example that they have. So now their minds, right? Their emotions, they've got church hurt. They've got all these things, right? Because they've run up against somebody who is not truly a Christ follower. I'm going to just call a spade a spade, get offended if you want to, holla back, okay? Because if you were, your (laughs) tendencies, your fruit would reflect that, okay? That's on word right there. And so if your tendencies and your fruit is not reflecting that, and it's reflecting man's opinion, your tradition, the way you, you know, all of y'all's, you know, Okay, your little clicks and your little fads and your little you ain't with us, so we ain't with you. Okay, well, please, please, please know, y'all, that's not on God. Please separate the two, okay, because they are very different things. And I feel like sometimes the good Lord is probably looking down on us like I'm. y'all are a poor representation of, of truly why I have you in this earth. We do, mm-hmm. because with that, I feel like with that, with that fakery, Mm-hmm. Alongside that, right alongside it, running parallel with it is the yeah. lack of is the lack of grace. Mm. You know, it's instead with that fakery runs the judgmental and the criticalness, right? And you know, the finger pointing and Girl. the blaming. And it's just like, okay, none of that is God. Not any of that. It's all hypocritical. I mean, I can't tell you how many situations we can recall from our young adult years yes, ma'am. of people being penalized and I'm going to use that word appropriately okay <laughs> within the church community by people leadership who them themselves did the very thing when they were young adults how sway are we double the double? What is it, Danielle? The dubery? What the is du- the double yes. dubery? What are you serious? It it is almost like they took the word accountability and twisted it really for their mm-hmm. own for their own devices. Mm-hmm. Because they're, they're we understand, right? God holds us, God does hold us as believers to a standard, right? And there is a level of accountability in God, like here, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's here, the relationship here. But yes. I feel like then the church then took that and it's like, well, you need to be more accountable here. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, no, because you're just a human being. Like, I'm just a human being. Come on. Well, those yeah. are those are also churches sometimes that fear yeah. that the relationship that um, the the saints and they have with God is different than the one that the pastor and the the hierarchy Man. have when we are all walking the same faith to and we're all having our own path and journey. And our relationship with God is singular. Mm-hmm. It we, are all, we are all the messy. veil is torn. When they say the veil is torn, understand the veil is torn. And if you go to a, if you are part of a, what apologies for the offense, okay? But you can go directly to God. If you have to go through an intermediary or, or someone else with two legs, know that you can go directly, directly. to God. You have your own relationship. Uh, and if you are in that, I highly encourage you to become free, seek freedom, read your Bible, understand um, that you are a part of um, a traditional mess. (laughs) 
Well, to piggyback on that, especially when there are many families that end up going to the same church. Come away. Do we feel like fakeries is generational because of what they're what they see and what they're taught? Um, mm -hmm. You know, is it passed down from the family based on pride or uh, trying to uphold a certain image or reputation? I'm I'm just saying these are all mm -hmm. good um, examples that we have also maybe seen. Uh, all of it. All of it. All yeah, no. of it. You can you can reread it again if you need to. All <laughs> of it. Seen and seen and lived. All seen of it. Seen and lived. Church and non-church when it comes yes. to generational fakery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Generational fakery. Mm -hmm. Honey, upholding the image or reputation based on pride. Right. Honey. Really? Yeah. We got it. Yeah. What is what they say? We got an image to uphold. We got a reputation to uphold. You know what? You know what's a good reputation to uphold? Fruits of spirits, right? Integrity, honesty. Those are great reputations to be upheld. Bakery, not so much. No, no. And to even, and to even, to even, it's such energy wasted. There's so mm -hmm. much energy wasted in trying to portray yourself as one way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so much energy and time that is wasted trying to please people versus please God. Mm -hmm. You know? And yeah. um, it took me a while because I was caught up in that. Not because I wanted to be. But I was caught up in that, and it took me a while. It took me a while to be like, no, no, this this is who I am. This is who God made me to be. Right. This is who I'm going to be. And if it gets me in trouble and it offends some people and it upsets some people. Honey. Well. The story of our lives. Hmm. You know, you are free to love me from a distance, as I love to say. <laughs> you are free to love me from a distance. Because I'd rather be pleasing God all day long than worry about pleasing man. Yes. Facts. Mm -hmm. Owning your own truth is amazing. My most liberating in that was writing my book release. Um, that was huge. Where I have a, a chapter where I'm talking about um, how I'm at the sheriff's department in and I'm there for my safety and all of my items are on the ground because they wouldn't fit in my vehicle. So I was waiting for a family member to arrive with a second vehicle. And I sat there as I'm, I guess, as you have that outer body experience as a, as a, as a deputy sheriff is helping yeah. you outside of your home yeah. with someone that you were, you know, allegedly, you know, this is the person that's supposed to love me. Right. And as they're escorting you out to safety uh, and I'm getting there and I'm parked now at the sheriff's um, office and, 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 and in, a, in a safe environment. And I look at my items that were unloaded from the deputy's car onto the ground because obviously he had to continue on to work um, or his shift. And so I'm looking at my items. I'm looking at my car that's packed. And I just had that lifetime TV moment. You know what I mean? Where I was like, how is this happening? You want to talk about reputation? I'm a professional in these streets. Everybody knows me as a professional. How, yeah. how am I here in a, in a domestic abuse situation at the sheriff's office, you know, sitting there in the parking lot as a victim, right? Um, with my items on the ground, like, how did I get here? How did I get here? And so to share that in my book was so vulnerable, but God made me do it because I was like, I don't want people buying this book, reading this and understanding that that place of brokenness, right? Yeah. And how I had a smile on my face every time they saw me for years. Because again, right, that's your fakery, right? You're dealing with trauma, but out, out, you know, in, at home and outside the home, no one would ever know because that face was like flint, okay? 
smile and professional, honey. You did not know. And so to to look at that when we talk about upholding an image, like I thought about that personally, like the image I always upheld was a professional woman. And I'm sitting here feeling like one of the women that you see on any given day on the Lifetime channel. <laughs> Sorry about to the women who's on the lifetime job, but I, I mean, again, and it's no judge on them, but th think about how we are in our lives, right? And like, how, how did I get here? And there's been millions of women before me that have been in that experience. And God forbid, there's probably going to be women after. And why did women yeah. think that she was, I don't even want to say better enough or good enough or, or beyond that. Let's just be real and relevant, right? Like, how did I, how did I? Now, how did y'all, how did I get here? And mm -hmm. that was an awakening moment for me of what kind of reputation have I upheld where I am sitting here in the most vulnerable place, right? And um, you know your life is real when, when you got a deputy escorting you out of your own home that you pay a mortgage on, honey. You know that is oh, the yeah. real. And so, yeah. honey, I just want to just help some people get free Go back and watch season one. And if any of you are in a situation where you are, you're having to do, uh, you know, live a life of, of fakery, please. Or any of the bedfellows, as, as Danielle is called, any of them. OK, if you feel like you're upholding that image for whatever reason, please. I, I'm sharing my story being real and relevant and transparent to just. I, you know, I beg you get into a place of freedom because God is about being free and, um, and being real. And, and that's what this, this, this show's topic is about tonight is to be real. Yeah. I love how, I love, I know, right. I love how God made us both be transparent in our books. Mm. Um, and I really wrestled with that thing. I mean, I really wrestled with that. I was, I was not happy with that, with that directive. I was like, mm, at all, no. As, no, as though it was a question, you know, as though I had a choice. Was like, I thought mm, it was no one's business no. to be very honest with you. My yes. past experiences, I yes. felt that I was healed and God had set me free and I was ready to move forward. And so I was like, God, why you got me out here in these streets trying to recall this stuff? Like you, you want me to bring this trauma back up? I'm healed from this. And God's like, you're yeah. healed from this and this trauma no longer has you, right? It's not trauma any longer. Release right. that, okay? Right. And that you're no longer the victim, which I'm not, right? And I am free and happy and forward focused, okay? Uh, and knowing that what God took all of us through was, was for a reason and that nothing is wasted. It's just literally lessons that we can share with other people to encourage them on their journeys, um, because we just never know. I mean, no well, one every, ever. Yeah, everything we go through is for someone else. Absolutely. I will say that until God takes the last breath out of my body. Come everything on. we go through is for someone else. It's and not if we're, about. And if we're busy living a life of fake. And, oh, mm -hmm. nothing bad ever happens to me. Life is great. The sun is shining. There's sprinkles and sparkles and glitter everywhere. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's vomiting unicorn. <laughs> it's just, it's just life is just great. And it's like, no, mm. no, 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 no. God, God, doesn't, God mm. doesn't want that from us. No. God wants us to say, yeah, God, today was hard. Mm -hmm. Today was hard. I thank you for the lessons that I learned in today. Mm. But today was hard. Because once again, going back to what we said about being fake with God, what is the right. point? None. What is the point when he already knows how we feel? He already he already heard every curse word that stayed up here and <laughs> didn't come out here about today and the actions of today and the people that tested us today. I mean, it was like, mm, yeah, bless you. Bless you. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say bless you. That's what, that's what I'm gonna say. Facts. And God already knows. Yeah, but you weren't thinking bless you. I already, I, I know what you were thinking. You Listen. know. But it's that it's that honesty and that transparency that draws people to God. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Not the and, the and the things that we continue to struggle with. 
the three of us are not perfect by any means. And we no. still have our daily struggles. Honey. Daily. Minute by minute. What you talking about daily? Sometimes mm. minute by minute. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> and to continue to give, even though we've been through things, we do still continue to have to give God glory for what we've been through and the yeah. people that we're trying to help along the way. Because Absolutely. like you said, Nia, it, None of this is for our own doing. We're not asking to go through these things. No. no. By any means. <laughs> no, no, no. Our lives are living testimonies, right? And so if we are not being transparent, then what story is our life telling? Are we giving fiction or fairy tale with our lives? We're right? giving, we giving cute TikTok dances and Instagram reels. That's what we're giving, you know? Life is so good. Life is cute. Life is this. It's like, no, no. Life, life sometimes will knock you down, drag you. <laughs> you know, if you're not careful, it can take you out, you know, and to be able to be real in those moments and say, right. you know what? Today was just it just, it just sucked. Excuse my, excuse my French in it. <laughs> right. Like it was a tough day, right? Like really God. I mean, there's times where God, God and I have, y'all don't even want to be around for the conversations that God and I had. Cause he gets, oh. the, he gets the really God. We oh. have the same conversations all day long. Oh, all day oh. long. Really? Which, is, really which is why he talks back to me in the same way. But he's like, really, Tania? Really? <laughs> Man, I'm like, but but I, didn't you see how they just treated me? Like, I know you saw how they you. just treated me. Mm. I love that Donnie McClurkin song, We Fall Down But We Get Back Up, because it is something that we constantly are having to do is pull ourselves back up. And it's, it is something, and in addition to some of the other songs, um, when I know you had some awesome songs to go along with um, today's episode, too, that I would love for you to share, too. Honey, <laughs> we couldn't talk about being real without Cheryl Lynn's got to be real, okay? For the culture, for the culture, okay? That's the disco song for the ages, okay? Everybody loves that. Oh, it's timeless. Call, it's timeless. But let me tell you, read the lyrics for those who don't know the lyrics, okay? Right. Or if you're born in this generation and you possibly have not heard heard the song before we're gonna make sure it gets put in the comments so that you can learn you know a little bit of your history there on why you have got to be real right and, and why they were real so that's that was a great song um and then I had not heard of Brandon P before but I love um sometimes I love listening to uh, Christian rappers and um and gospel go-go and I love it and so his song if you like a little turn up honey no fakery mm. read the I was like, oh, okay, I love it. A little Christian turn up with the fakery. Absolutely. And he breaks it down for you. Perfect. That was a good, that last one was a good song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Have y'all experienced the ripple effect of fakery in your lives, personally or professionally? Mm -hmm. You and this ripple effect. Come on. <laughs> the, the ripple effect of your bedfellows. How about that? <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> sipping. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, I have. I think I think if everybody's willing to sit in it for a moment, everybody's answer to that would probably be yes, right? Okay, in in one way, shape, or form, um, the actions of others. The action of other people's fakery, right? Mm. And how it impacts my life. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, just, you know, like we talk about growing up in church. Yeah. In your name. Just even what people have attached to your name. Wow. It's Talk like, oh, it. you're this. You're mm -hmm. you're this person. You're you're this person. Oh, Come this on. is who you are. Oh, that's who you're related to. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. 
Yes, yes, that's who I'm related to, but I need you to still see me as an individual, <laughs> as an individual person. I am not, I am not a, I'm not a clone hmm. of others, you know, that carry the same last name as me. I'm still an individual person as God made me to be. Real talk. You know, and so living out that ripple effect of that um, hmm. and the expectations the fake expectations, you know, mm -hmm. and they weren't fake mm -hmm. from me, from, from the aspect of, I didn't think they were real, that right. fake, but the fake of what was being put Come on. on me. Mm -hmm. And if you only knew the behind mm. the scenes. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my. Did you just try to clutch it? Clutch a pocket and get my whole collar together. <sighs> yeah, mm. yeah. That's that's the real effect of fakery for me in my personal life. I love General Motors American vehicles when they used to put on their mirrors. Back in the day, y'all, they had cars with mirrors, passenger <laughs> mirrors. Okay. They weren't all automatic. We didn't have rear view cameras. You know, this is neat. But back in the day, okay, they always had one line that was etched into the bottom of the rear of the passenger and driver side mirrors. Do y'all remember what the line said, y'all? Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Yes. Now. So talk on that. That's it. That's all I got to say. That's it. That's it. Because they was letting you know, don't look in this mirror that's looking behind you or beside you and your perception of it is not the reality of the actual thing you see in that mirror. Right. Okay. Because right. see, sometimes we can look in mirrors and think that they are true reflections. They let you know. Not so. Not so. Mm -mm. Good analogy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Try and make it real and relevant for the people. Okay. We taking it from scripture to automotive mirrors. Okay. We, we, we span in the whole gap to help you understand the perspective of the fakeries, right? The perceptions. Things aren't always what they seem. And even if they are, what's, what is now the perception of the death? Are they close? Are they far away, right? Because you might think they might be right up on you and they could be further away or vice versa. You might think there's distance and they're right next to you, right? You don't even know. You looking at it, you think you know. You see in with your eyes and you think you see what you see. But let me tell you, what they said is you what you see is not what you see. That's what that Mary should have said. It's but. also about having discernment because mm. what people tell you oh, and is. what you believe and and what, what we also always say, actions speak louder than words. Mm. Um, sometimes it's also the the fact that no reaction or no actions Come can on. speak even louder. So it's also right. having discernment about, um, you know, be what you're being told, look it up for yourself. Um, you know, are these generational traits? Right. Look at their parents, look at their, look, you know, look at their siblings, whatever. Don't just, go what anybody tells you and being naive you got to have discernment um in every situation absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. even in even in even in reading god's word for yourself come on you know it, there's nothing wrong with now almost every church you know they put the scriptures up on the <laughs> up on the big screen and mm -hmm. you know and you don't have to bring a Bible anymore. You don't need to open your Bible anymore. But yes, you do. Yes. Yes, you do. 
read it for yourself. And dare I say, read it in multiple translations. So that you can get a better so understanding. Full understanding of yes. Oh, that is what God is trying to say. Mm, mm, you know, mm. don't just take what's being fed to you. Right, right. As always, being one hundred percent real and authentic. Mm. <laughs> We've had them with a lot of information. This is a lot Ooh. of information today, y'all. We see y'all are watching us on the live. Don't be just staring at the screen, honeys. Put something in the comments. Let us know. Give us your feedback. When have you experienced some fakeries? Talk to us or yes. the best fellows of the fakeries, okay? Tell us. We'd love to hear. Because <laughs> y'all quiet tonight, but we, we peep you. We see you there, right? We love it. We got like the Facebook, we got the viewers. And don't panic because we can't see who you are. So you don't even have to panic with that. We, Lucky can just not. See, we just we just see the count. That's all. And we're thankful. <laughs> we're thankful that you hung with us. Yes. Thank, so thankful that you hung with us for this topic. And like we said, um, if you came on late, this wasn't meant to be judging. It right. was not meant to be judgmental or condemning. This is just a real and relevant conversation that God told us to have with y'all mm -hmm. on faith. Because yeah. we're, we're, we're in a season of faith. So mm. we're approaching a holiday, ladies. Honey. Mm. Honey. That, that, is, that is surrounded in faith. It's All rooted in faith. <laughs> so let's talk time. about it. Let's All talk up. about it. All up. I wanted to know when I put in here, why do Christian holidays have pagan roots, right? And helping people to understand. So let me go back and explain this when we talk about the fakeries and we go back and we talk about some of our favorite memories and, and flashbacks, right? And we talk about some of these things from our past. I want to just give a little education, okay? So found this great resource that talks about Christian holidays and having pagan roots. And so when we talk about the fakery within the church and how very often in many churches uh, and some religions uh, that are traditional do not, um, they don't favor well to certain celebrations, but favor extra well to others, okay? Um, and so doing a little research and it says, why do Christian holidays have pagan roots? OK. And if you don't know what pagan means, pagan is worshiping other gods, uh, whether it's the God of the sun, the God of the moon, whether it's goddess and goddess, God, lowercase g's. OK. And all of those right. references. All right. Um, get an understanding. OK. I always tell people, just get an understanding. Don't make a stance without getting un an understanding. And so yeah. uh, the, the great research says when they were trying in history, saying when they were trying to convert people from uh, a pagan religion before Christianity, because if you understand history, Christianity was not the first religion. So let's just timeline, understand history. All right. Um, right. When they were trying to bring people from a pagan religion to Christianity, they noticed that there was pushback when it came to certain traditions and pagan holidays. So what a lot of the, 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 the Roman and the, and the, and the, of that time, they, they merged the two. So they tried to compromise and they wind up giving what they deem was the best of both worlds. Okay. Um, and so we're going to make sure that you have that history put in the, in the comments for everything we talk about tonight. There's resource links to that for you to go, Read about yourself um, so that you can know the stance of what we celebrate in this country, right? From right. when we talk about from a Christianity perspective and we call it Christian, when we label it Christian to understand that most, most Christian holidays that we celebrate in America, if you're watching this from another country, you get a pass, but in the United States of America, okay, most of the Christian holidays, and I'm, I'm going to say that to you, um, have pagan roots, okay? Um, and I know it might be tough to digest that, but I'm just saying. It is tough 
because we love to celebrate Christmas. <laughs> we love to celebrate Christmas, right? Um, ma'am, I'm just. But for all the wrong reasons. I'm going to give you all a very short synopsis of major Christian holidays with and beliefs with pagan roots or traditions. Again, major Christian holidays and beliefs with pagan roots or traditions. Y'all buckle up, hold on to your invisible clutching pearls. Okay. We already know off the break, we just had Halloween two, three days ago. Okay. Yeah. Off the break. We already know that. Okay. We're going to keep on going through the year. What is the next major holiday? Hate to have to tell you this. Thanksgiving. We understand. Right? Right. Might have had some roots. Christmas. I, I know you all as Christians, there's some. There's going to be some kickback. Let me just let you know. I loved reading the historical perspective that when Joseph and Mary were being called down for the census, that the census is the only reason why they left where they were to go where they were going, y'all. And the census in that time was only done typically during late spring and summer months because they felt people traveled better down to the capital when it was good weather. So for you all that believe December 25th. <laughs> Just want you to understand, okay? Um, you know, it's going to make me reanalyze Christmas gifts. I don't know. We're going to have to think about it. I'm going to pray about it. But anywho, right? Of, of now, now that you're in the know and can't become ignorant of it, right? And so understanding that this holiday, again, we it is labeled as a Christian holiday. Y'all, please, please don't get confused with the birth of Jesus, and the pagan root of the origin of the Christmas holiday and how it became what it is today, okay? Two very different things. Jesus was born, and he was born in a during a warm month, That's okay? Funny. Wasn't in December. So just want right. to give you that, that heads up from a history perspective um, so that you understand that. Coming on around to the beginning of the year, uh, between Christmas, uh, well, fall going into New Year, also as Carnival, so some of you all that might celebrate carnival, right? Um, and we're all of those things, right? So you've got, oh my goodness, that's that's the turn up, right? Right, right. You can your arms just thinking about carnival, right? All of that. You can just look at the at the floats and know that that has big roots off the break. Okay, so um, <laughs> right off, off the break. So again, another holiday has has uh pagan roots. Um, as you're coming around, New Year's Day, actually the first of January, again. Pagan root. Uh, Valentine's Day. St. Valentine's Day. Pagan root. Uh, you know, sorry. It's, it's, these are these are holidays that are celebrated and they have major pagan roots. Um, and, and the one that I know is going to clutch the pearls of all, all the saved and sanctified, let's just call it what it is, <laughs> is Easter. And Easter, y'all, was about Celebrating that sun god, right? We coming on around. It's that seasonality, right? And that's where that root came from of that transition. Um, it had nothing to do necessarily with uh, the death and the resurrection. Those are two very different things. Passover, very different things, right? Those are very different than what our Easter, uh, what we know in this culture. Again, if you're in another country, you might do something different. But in these United States, what we do Um yeah, it has pagan roots. And so it's just about you educating yourself, understanding um, when we talk about the fakery of it all and we talk about um, Halloween and Santa and the Duke mm -hmm. Fairy or whatever we want to talk about, right? And we want to say, well, we're not going to let our kids participate in Halloween. Well, then don't go buy them an outfit for Easter Sunday. You heard it here, okay? <laughs> don't do it. All right. Stop giving your Christmas gifts. I'm calling a spade a spade because see, what you're not going to do is keep cherry picking. Really, what you feel is permissible and what is factual to not be in the will of God. We can't y'all stop it. OK, so you've gotten your education. Govern yourselves accordingly. On the fakery, either be consistent 
or not, right? But as the Grammy used to say, you can't be loud and wrong. You choose one. You can't be both. So I'm a I'm a still rock my costume on the 31st, and I'm showing up to Easter with a big hat because I that's it. We're gonna be loud and wrong to both. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep it consistent all year round, okay? Because if we're gonna be fakery, we're gonna maintain that fake. Because this is what I'm saying. Don't forget my Christmas gift. <laughs> Boom. Absolutely. We sending out Christmas gifts. Okay. It might be a card with a tree on it. That's a double dupe. That's a what is it? Dupe doubery? Dupe doubery. Okay. Double Come on. So, so we have put, guys, we have put the link um to understanding these pagan holidays and oh. their roots and origin. We put it in the comments. We'd love to have your feedback once mm -hmm. again. This is not <laughs> this is not us telling you. This is us helping you to gain understanding mm -hmm. and encouraging you to do your research. Pray and do mm -hmm. your research. Ask God for understanding There's that. of it all. Ask him to give you understanding and clarity and revelation on it. You know, so that at least this way, if you if you and your family choose to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Christmas, you know, then you're doing it from the understanding of, okay, God, I'm giving thanks that you were born, not on this day. Correct. But I'm giving thanks that you chose, God, to put yourself in flesh and come here and walk this earth so that you could have, un you could understand everything that I am going through, right? right. It's right. It's with that type of understanding and not, and not watering it down mm -hmm. to Santa Claus, giving the most expensive gifts, mm -hmm. you know, um, decorating the house to the nines, but everybody in the, in the house, their hearts are as cold as ice. What is the point of decorating? Mm. Decorating warm and everybody's heart and spirit is cold. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that right there. Um, I'm so, just saying. I'm just saying. Like, come hey, on. Man. <laughs> pick one. Pick, pick one. You know, and 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 break the generational cycle of that. Start mm. teaching your children once God gives you revelation on it. Start yeah. teaching them the truth because it mm. may not come from school. No, oh. it may not come from the church. But you can be mm. teaching them in the home, hey, this is the truth. This mm -hmm. is the truth of this holiday, or this is why we don't celebrate right. this. This is why we don't partake in it this way. This right. is why right. we choose to do something else on this day, right? Yeah, yeah. and then that way they have a stance of truth, right? They don't have selectivity. Where it's we're picking and choosing what we are going to honor, uh, and this is truth and this is not truth. No, be be whole truth, right? Okay, um, and this is this is just this is the show, and we're talking about the fakery of it all, and and to be real, and so being real and relevant, being genuine, um, this is all about that. And this little portion, I just when I was like, you know what, Nia, we need to put out. I know it's going to be stepping on some toes. I know some people are not going to want to hear about it because, honey, we love a, a, you want your Easter ham and your big hat. Okay. I'm just saying, you know it. The right? Easter and this, outfit is and I'm everything. Sorry, I stand flat footed on the pandemic hit and the quarantine hit right before Easter. And I believe it with my whole being when I had, God and I have had this conversation about that. Let me tell you what, the one that is, recognized around the globe where people are literally putting man before God and the tradition of Easter. Again, mm -hmm. pagan rooted tradition and all of the things that we're doing is none of God is not in any of it. He's not in any of it. The stores, I mean, go through the roof on sales for Easter outfits. Come on, y'all. God was like, uh uh, I'm tired of this. We I'm tired be, of this. What y'all gonna be, be is at home in your pajamas listening to the word of God without your outfit, without your Easter ham. That's that's what you're gonna do. 
truth be told, we should be celebrating his burial and his resurrection every single day. Come on. Every day. It's because he got up that we are even able to have mm -hmm. every day that we have. Real right? Talk. That should be something that should be daily. Mm -hmm. Daily mm -hmm. thankfulness, daily thanksgiving, <laughs> daily Christmas, if you want right. to use the names, if you want to use the actual holidays. I'm here for that. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> right? I'm just saying, let's be real and relevant. Either we're going to keep it going or we're not. Mm -mm -mm. Woo. This has been so good tonight. This has been so good. Y'all, we know y'all are watching. We know tonight's been real more, more of processing and mm. internalizing what we're saying. But we so thank you for hanging with us. Thank you for hanging with us tonight. Yes. Truly, post, post, and share this. We would still love to know how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't agree, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. We we actually, the three of us got pretty tough skin. <laughs> that goes along with that last name, people. Come on. <laughs> pretty tough, come on. We got pretty tough skin. So we can, yes. we can handle a disagreement. We, we embrace that, right? That's how we all learn and grow. Come on. So, you know, post your comments, whether you're watching it live or watching it later on a replay, or if you're watching it live and want to comment later after we go off air, you can do that too. <laughs> right. You can this, do that. There you go. That's true. You know, Absolutely. In the comments we later. We love that. We love that. Ooh, mm -hmm. so ladies. What's your favorites and flashbacks, honey, y'all? Mm. This is so, good. Y'all need to share a time. Let's talk about a time when you realized mm. that one of your favorite childhood memories was fake. Come on. Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy. Who else? Who else? Other the than Easter Santa Bunny. and the Tooth Fairy. Easter Come Bunny. on. The Easter, the Easter Bunny. Come on. I'm going to tell you when I knew Santa didn't exist. I'm going to tell you. My mother gave me Shout out to mom, because I know you watch it sometimes. <laughs> and I love you. She gave me the Sears catalog. Now, for those of you in this generation who might not know what that means. Oh, Lord. Okay? Y'all, the Sears catalog is kind of like Amazon in print. That's okay. Right, basically. Um, and so she said to me, and the quote, circle and fold the pages down of what you would like, I kid you not, for Christmas. Now, when you give a child, and let's put this in context, y'all know how many items is on Amazon? Trillions, okay? It this was, year's catalog. It was a phone book. Like, yes. phone okay? book. So you sitting down with your spectacles on, like... You and that was the book. Christmas edition. Because yes. the Christmas edition was always the Come on. thickest catalog. Listen. We did, that was the only catalog I was into was the Christmas Sears catalog. Yes. Okay. And when she handed me the Holy Grail of gifts, okay, <laughs> and told me <laughs> at whatever I'm trying to remember what age I was, I was young. I, I think it was a preteen, I think at least, to choose what I would like for Christmas. Okay. That's not yeah. when I knew that Santa wasn't real. I'm going to tell you when I knew Santa wasn't real. OK, because what did we do? First of all, when you give me an open door, what we're going to do is walk through the open door. OK, the buy, you know, the buy this word asking you shall receive. Read your word. OK, honey. I don't know how many pages I turned down. And circled, but I'm going to just say, I'm going to just say. In my fam, my parents' living room, they had double sets of double windows. So double sets of double windows, okay, across one side of their house, all right, inside. And this is when I knew Santa didn't exist. When I came out the room and I came into the living room and I saw across the entire double sets of windows, and double sets meaning that's one, two, three, four, right? double sets of windows plus the walls the width of that living room wall on the floor these honey they were underneath a tree they was on the straight straight line okay everything 
I had circled and folded down. And at that point, little Win was like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what you done done is bought me everything I asked for in the mm. book in which you handed me, okay? So we put two and two together pretty quick. I was more than grateful for the blessing, but that was my childhood memory of, of finding out that Santa didn't exist by means of the Sears catalog. Govern yourselves accordingly. <laughs> I knew when we had our chimney, our chimney was downstairs well that's true. we never had christmas downstairs i mean we only had christmas <laughs> upstairs so <laughs> ah, she and, said, and she it said was a wood stove, a wood stove not a fireplace he right wasn't coming. That's right. no, no santa that's was right. coming through a wood stove mm -hmm. i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying she's like well the logistics of it all is that technically it it just didn't it just didn't the math didn't add up and I I'm a yeah calculate mm -mm, no that don't that don't work. <laughs> we still receive the gifts I do all want you all to know that with gratitude no matter yes. where where they came from where no they came from and to this from, day no matter where they come correct from, just amen and amen we we can send you a secret Santa via Amazon and you will accept the package I know I know you will. Any, any way you bless me lord i'll be satisfied come on with the smiley face oh hey 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 so you know, i love me some amazon though mm -mm. oh god <laughs> <laughs> amazon me. is your generation's sears catalog okay that's mm. exactly what it is that is exactly on steroids it's the right. Sears catalog on steroids with the whole prime, because honey, we didn't. It wasn't though. No, we didn't have that. Now that's no, that's, that's, that's no, no, no. You still had to wait for that thing, come on, and then you come had on. to go to the store and you to had to hide it. And and there's you that, had to hide it. right? Yes. Yeah, there was a lot um, of effort to that. I will say, for me, being in Sunday school, mm. definitely, I can recall still being about elementary age and <laughs> learning about Easter right mm -hmm. through god's word and not seeing anything about easter bunny a rabbit no eggs <laughs> <laughs> no candy <laughs> or gifts i and mean I was just like, well then why do we you know why why how did jesus get replaced with the east with a bunny i mean make it make sense and that and that for me was my like like my i my aha you know like wait a minute mm -hmm. wait a minute right. <laughs> i'm all dressed up and <laughs> i'm being taken to these you know to these houses for easter egg hunts but what's that got to do with what's the easter egg hunt i mean i was a child i loved the candy i appreciated the candy and the There's quarters that. and the quarters and the eggs you know mm -hmm. we got the money mm -hmm. but i was just like but where's the where's the connection because i don't understand i don't understand the connection there okay hmm this there is what's being shown to me on tv and correct you know, in stores and all the de decorations and decor everywhere is bunny rabbits and pastel colored eggs. <laughs> like, right. Like, well, I didn't read anywhere in scripture that when Jesus got up from the grave that he went and colored some eggs with the disciples. I mean, like, ma'am. You ma know, the women didn't bring him eggs to the grave, like to the, like what? How? The, Nothing in there like the rabbit found him. The rabbit saw nothing. him first. <laughs> nothing is connected. <laughs> Help us connect these dots, y'all. That's how and you the, know. And the analyzer and the processor in me, even as a oh, child, God. was like, okay. This don't make sense. No. I want I want to connect. I want I want understanding. Please, somebody help me understand. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, listen, once I became an adult. Well, even all through my childhood years, my godparents, shout out to them, okay? Some of the best godparents on this planet, and I'm a grown adult. Listen, I got in my feelings 
after I got married, it was a couple of years after I had gotten married, my first marriage, let's put that out there, okay? Because there will be a second, my first marriage, okay? They right. cut me off. They had the audacity to cut my Easter baskets that they gave me every year. I was livid. I was like, how are you going to cut? They just, and no, no forewarning. They just, just want you to just stop. They just, they was like, well, we figured, you know, since you was growing it, who figured? Did you, did we have a conference call? Did you, <laughs> ma'am, I am used to the basket with some, some, some edibles. Okay. With, with some things in it that, you know, you've gotten me accustomed to. So now we are accustomed to the fakery. Okay. That's right. Because now we depended on it. Now you, you've started me out this way. Well. This is the lifestyle in which I am accustomed to. Okay. Hey. This tradition, this fakery, we're going to have to maintain this thing, honey. <laughs> How you cut me off and don't even tell me? <laughs> going to assume that since I'm at a certain stage in my life that I no longer desire chocolates and treats. Who? Who made I that mean, decision for me? I mean, I, I decorate for Christmas, but I tell people, I'm like, hey, don't get it twisted. I'm not caught up in what the tree means and Correct. anything else. This is just me. Who loves to decorate? Thank you. <laughs> and I will use any excuse to decorate. If it was up to me, the tree would stay up year round. I would change it out from Christmas to to spring to fall. Like I right. would, it's it's just a piece of. She decor. would just have a rotating holiday. Just... Uh, yes, I would. Yes, yes. I would. yes. But yeah, <laughs> Santa Claus. I'm telling you, the tooth fairy is a tricky one. Now. Mm. Because that takes a little skill set. Every parent is not savvy enough, you know, with this whole replacing a tooth for something else, monetary. You got to be really good at it. And you got to know, and you got to know when to go, when to go in the room. Like mm -hmm. you can't do it 10 minutes after you put them to bed. We're talking, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning when, when your child has entered that deep sleep. Mm -hmm. you know. Interesting. To, to do the to do the exchange. I don't know. Um, Danielle, I'm trying to remember. You've all y'all have y'all ever had any two fairy experiences? No. I know we there's were. some parents out here that's real in these streets with the two fairy. Like they they put in coins. I'm like, yo, they got a whole mouth they're gonna lose. You know, that's a that's a bank account right there. They putting in these underneath these pillars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we did it. We did it for a season with mm -hmm. our daughter for many years. Just you know, maintain it. But after a while, after a while, you know, and she when she wouldn't see it happen the next morning, <laughs> or it would take a few days, it is because we hadn't gone to the bank to get actual physical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was like, Did the two pay forget about me? I was like, No, probably just a little busy. Give it a few days. <laughs> they Listen, just ain't been for the ATM. I love Priscilla Shira's version on the tooth fairy if you all haven't heard it uh oh my goodness she talked about how when her son turned five he got an envelope or cards from multiple family members with five dollar bills and so she said her husband went uh and put the one of the fives underneath of the his pillow right and so she said he was so excited, came downstairs and was like, look what the tooth fairy left me and was waving this five dollar bill. And so she said she was looking at her husband like, I will put my hands on you. OK, like, where did he get this five dollar bill from? And her husband was like, chill, no worries. Do you remember everybody gave him five dollar bills for his birthday? So in the kitchen drawer is an envelope of five dollar bills he said i just recycled one some of those birthday bills so they gave each other high fives that is a great story of financial wisdom okay uh, a good use of financial stewardship if you are going to maintain the tooth fairy fakery okay mm -hmm. at least don't use current money recycle the money okay that, don't put that, it in the piggy bank right keep using it but that's that's a fakery. I feel like those are fakeries that I feel like everybody hmm. just unfortunately yeah. naturally falls into. Right? Absolutely, naturally falls into. It's a rarity to hear a parent <laughs> telling a young child, "There's no such thing as sin." Right. Yeah. And, and, and our stance in it, right? We get defensive if you're telling people too young, like, "Don't tell him that there's no Santa," right? Like, 
Let well, them also, everything is at the fingertips. So at, they're watching, you know, YouTube and they're on these tablets and you're letting the, you know, the TVs raise the kids at this point. So they're seeing these things earlier and earlier. So yeah. even before they're, they're talking and walking, not alone going to pre-K and kindergarten when they're, you know, starting yeah. these conversations at school. You're not even getting a chance to, you know, decide and sculpt on what you want them to know, what you don't, because it's already being predetermined from what they're watching. Mm, mm, mm. Very true. Very true. And so now, dope. now, now we're suspect, you know, we have a lack of trust, right? You know, you know, you got lack of trust because, you, you know, you got too many fakery ripple effects in your life. Well, because then it gets to a point where like, OK, I don't know what to believe. Come on. So you don't want me to believe in the tooth fairy. You don't want me to believe in Santa Claus, or maybe you do, but mm -hmm. yet I struggle with believing in God because just like God, I can't see, I can't see any of them. Ma'am, I was I going to ask you, how do atheists this? I'm like, how do people who don't believe in God, it came right to my, thank you, ma'am. We on, we on, we on one. We got the same brain. Because when I'm like, <laughs> you can't get upset about atheism. Mm -hmm. Like they don't believe in God. Well, you live in a fake life, uh, supposed to be a life of, according to a Christ follower that is fake of all fake. And now mm -hmm. you upset at people who have the audacity to feel they can't believe in God. Well, what what example do they have? Are you their only example? Yeah, I can see where they get that take. I can see. Lord it. help us. I can see it. <laughs> Come on, what we can help in? us. What we grew up in, yes. Thank the Lord that none of us, come on, that we still believe in God and the fullness of who he is based on our past experiences. Difference is we sought truth and freedom. Mm -hmm. We sought it out. Like we, dare I say we fought for it. We fought for truth and we fought for freedom. Literally. It's like, no. I'm not going to take what you're saying at just face value. I'm, I'm going to get to know God for myself. Mm. And I'm going to make sure I have that. a, and I'm going to make sure I have enough relationship with him. Yes. that I can even hear him for myself. And so that nobody know? else is coming to me with oh. the fake prophecies of thus saith the Lord. And I'm looking back at you like, God hadn't told me that. If I could just run around right now, let me just say. And they have the audacity, audacity to tell us who are seekers of truth. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You want to question the seekers of the truth. Okay. Yet you stay in your bondage. <laughs> Help me. But then, what did he say? Houseway, connect the dots. Houseway, <laughs> make it make sense to them. Make it make sense. But yeah, you you gonna block your blessings? Help us. Hmm. It is it is why we feel the most fakery is in the church. What did, what did Harriet Tubman say? The hardest thing that she could have freed more slaves if they knew they were slaves. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's that, it's that, it's that breakdown. Mm. It's that here, please take what we're feeding you. And don't look, don't look into anything for yourself. Come on, because the worst thing you can do is teach us the word of God. That's like the worst thing you could have done is taught us how to read. Because now what we're going to do, we're going to read it back to you. Reading is power. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to read it back to you in a different translation. <laughs> Take it down. I'm going to bring various understandings. You're going to give it to me question. in King James Version. I'm going to give it to you in the Amplified. Ma'am. With the brackets of synonyms, every other word. I'm going to break it down. I got questions. Yes. If God is truth, 
then why is the most fakery within the church? We just talked about that. We did. <laughs> we just talked about that. Yeah. The most. The most. In I think I think it's I think it's there because it's it's that assimilation. Well, everybody else is doing it. So let me just, let me just join in. I remember. Because no, nobody wants to see me be real. Nobody wants to see me be transparent. I'm going to get hushed. I'm going to get hushed if I'm real and transparent. I'm going to be told, shut your mouth. Listen, I remember folks chewing, chewing. Chewing like tobacco chewing. <laughs> and those that y'all are young, chewing like bubblegum chewing, okay? Chewing, chewing. When I tell you chewing, they wanted to chew me out in my former life that I didn't take the last name of my former husband. They had the audacity to tell me. <sighs> It I is just keep the going. word of God. This is what they said. You are being blasphemous. You're being disrespectful. It's scripture. In the Bible, you are supposed to. So I said, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me help free you from yourselves. Let me help free you from yourselves. Okay. Just take you back again. Research and history. There's nothing biblical in the Bible about someone taking on their husband's Last name. So that you know, in most cases, they kept their father's name or the tribe that they came from. So I want you all, again, you can't be loud and wrong. Pick one. Okay. <laughs> right there. Lord. And I was like, uh, well, here is here are the reasons why. And first of all, we are on one accord. So I don't even know why we need to have this conversation with you. But let me humor you and educate you on where this comes from. Okay. And where this came from in history, right? A part of English culture and tradition and what stemmed it. Again, a lot of pagan roots, but you can't tell church folks that, okay? Because they felt that I was being disrespectful. Now, I will tell you that on my next marriage, I will, in fact, take that husband's last name and carry on the pagan tradition in which you asked me to honor that you mistakenly thought was scripture. Thank you very much. Because again, we're going to just keep it going. Thank you. Mo moving on to the next <laughs> I got questions. Because if we're going to do it, if we're going to we're going to maintain the fakery. We're going to maintain. We're going to make. Hey. 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 <laughs> hey. I'm celebrating every holiday. Say less when you see me. Every year, I'm going to be dressed up. Okay, say less. I'm delivering Whoa. gifts. Why do church people not celebrate <laughs> Halloween but dress up and pretend every day of their lives? I mean, especially on Sunday. The but 31st yet, of October but is every seventh day in some churches. But I just don't understand. But then it's a sin to dress up on Halloween. Is it a sin? I, it's saying. a it is a sin because fake. it's worshiping a pagan god. Fake is fake no matter the occasion. Come on. And no matter the reason, fake is fake. You can you can dress it up and put a robe on it and put a preacher collar on it or put it in all white. God is looking at the heart. Ma'am. Can't see the ankles, but and we his know. word says so. He says, man looks at the outward, I look at the heart. Come on. And there's a reason why some of the the, the costumes are religion-based. Uh, just this weekend, we have pictures. Literally, people came in costume. The husband was dressed as a priest. The wife was dressed as a nun. And they had a baby that was in a little swaddling outfit. And I was like, I don't even know how that even, but okay, right? But again, straight up because the two have merged these two worlds okay that's its own that's its own private joke actually that's actually, kind of hilarious think about it right 
the priest in the nun costume. And so I'm thinking, I love it. I love that what y'all have done is taken the hypocrisy of it all and just turned it on its head. I'm going to come in as a sexy nun outfit. I'm just saying. <laughs> come on, sexy we're not, nun. We're not going to have no ankle nun. We done had enough of that bondage. <laughs> we will... You better not show up to church all. without your with your ankles showing, not wearing three slips. Do you hear me? You better three slips. I better see a half slip, a whole so slip, and in a, in a listen. No one knows nothing about no sl a slip anymore. Tania grew up with the slip ministry. They <laughs> believe it or not, you can still find them in stores. It's kind yes. of I, I've seen them in, in Target and I've laughed when I've seen them in Target. Listen, because of course it, it and you keep in right on pushing. Oh, oh no, it will never end up in my cart, but it's hilarious. I, I walk past it and I just chuckle because I'm like the struggle, the struggle mm. with the religion mm. and the fakery is real. The struggle, Come you on. know, with with the oppression of women. Because it was mm -hmm. never, it was never what men couldn't wear. Correct. Like that's a whole nother episode for another night. We're not gonna Come go there. And, and they would use but. this scripture, right? Of women can't adorn in men's clothing. Okay, well, guess what? You know what what men wore back then? They were robes and sandals. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were literally moo's of today. All right. Whatever you want to call them. All right. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have pants back then. If you really wanted to come on, y'all, see, this is what I'm talking about. You loud and wrong. You you can't even make a stance without understanding history. Hmm. At least understand what they wore back then to say, okay, this is okay. But really, to say, okay, well, you know what? If you're a female, you can wear nothing with legs. Okay, nothing. Everything has to be open bottom because basically that was it, right? Skirt, dress, open bottom. Right. Mm -hmm. Nothing with nothing with legs. And, and you now make a stance on this and keep people in bondage based on what? Where is it in the Bible? I don't know. I haven't yet. I've yet and I've read some pretty, I mean, extensive translations. Have you seen the translation? No. Break it down. Help me make it make sense. This it's is not going to make sense. And I'm not going to help you break it down because we, <laughs> we are all free on this show. Okay. So I, I can't even I can't even make it make sense for you or anybody else. All mm. I can say, like we've been saying all night, is go to God, do your own research, seek Correct. him for yourself mm -hmm. as far as how you are to be living your best life. Yes. So ladies, when mm -hmm. we put on the makeup, the hair, mm -hmm. the nails, are we adorning ourselves with fakery? And if so, does that mean we don't love our authentic selves? I had to pose that question. I loved that I posed that question with weave in my hair because I can do that because it's my business. I love that I could pose the question of the every now and again, I want to change up. Does it mean I don't love my authentic self because you see me in makeup every day or weaving my hair? Absolutely not. I I'm think it's only mind. when it takes you away from what your how, true self, your true self, as far as how God made you look. Correct. When you look in the mirror and you don't even recognize yourself anymore. Then you might start want to take a moment and ask yourself, okay, why do I feel the need to do Correct. all of this? Correct. Like, like what, what is all of this rooted in? Am I trying to please someone? Mm -hmm. You know, am I trying to fit in? Am I trying to assimilate in into culture because everybody else is wearing three and four sets yeah, of lashes? So I need to do the same. Honey. Like, it's you know. It to me, it all comes down to asking yourself, what is the root? What's, What's the, the intention? Reason why? What's the motive? Exactly. What is the reason why? Because none of us should ever look in the mirror. <laughs> and yes, and not, not recognize yourself. Recognize ourselves. Listen. Now, and there's it, plenty of times when I've been from on modeling and had the weave down the back and the full caked makeup, and I don't recognize myself in the visual. But I never lose sight of who I am 
in the physical. Those are very on different the inside. things. A on transformation the on, right, exactly, right? So a makeover has nothing to do with your internal, who you are. But when you start to really sacrifice your authenticity, I was like, that's a problem. That's a problem when it's like, who really are you? Have you become what you adorn? And that is, and I know that's hard for a lot of people to hear. Yeah. Because society is, is pushing the exact opposite of that. Yes. Right. All the TikTok before and after videos and people pushing themselves and them coming back. And it's like, right. Right. Okay. Who is that? Cause that didn't look anything. <laughs> it's like, when I tell you, hold it different like you. But there's no. a difference between enhancements Correct. and literally full tr transformations, like right. where people are getting <laughs> surgery, where people Correct. are changing and altering what God gave them. Yeah, what's Those the two different extremes? I yeah. feel like makeup and uh, and other things, to a certain extent, should be enhancements versus transformations like you're actually altering mm -hmm. what you know and you don't like who you see in the mirror or you're really not your authentic self because you're not yourself you, you, are, you, don't, you, you don't love your true self when you're not adorned in those things that's a huge problem right I, i've even heard women say oh well, i'm not myself if i don't have my nails done and it's like no are you listening to yourself right like you didn't come into this world with with acrylic tips, like you did not. You did not. You were not. You were not birthed with acrylic tips and. Honey, and but I love a nail done. But but at the, the end of the day, it doesn't see. It we doesn't define to, me. No, and that, that, and that is and that is what I'm getting to when, when people yes. start allowing it to define them. Correct. In that statement, there's definition of well, I can't. You know, yeah. I, I'm not. You can't separate I'm, I'm just yourself. not me without without my nails done. It's and your like, identity oh. is wrapped around this image that you have portrayed, right? And so it's like, how do I shed that? Again, now that's the ripple effect because you can't even shed that image or that reputation, right? Of God forbid mm -hmm. somebody sees you without your face on, right? right. Like, oh my gosh. Like, who are you? We don't even recognize you without your face on. Think about that. <laughs> your face is not on. Like your face is on you at all times, just so you know. Right. <laughs> right. Well, if God sees your face at all times, why does he tolerate the fakery? Why does he tolerate all of this? Does he though? Grace. Grace covers a multitude mm. in the King James Version. Grace covers a multitude of sins. But this and, God, and God already knew the God, 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 God. Also free, free will and free but he only yes, let that yes, thing go for so long but so, he also yes. recognizes that fake that fakery entered this world in the garden yes yes and so it will be something he i believe he knows it it will be something we will always contend with mm. just like fear just like guilt right just, just like shame just like anything else Right. It will constantly be something that will be iron sharpening iron. We will constantly yeah. be working against that and fighting against that mm. um, because I believe it's in our flesh. It's in our nature. Yeah. It's in our nature to want to fit in. You know, it's in our nature to want to assimilate. You know, it's not easy being it is not. It's not always easy mm. being authentic. Right. And being your real self, because sometimes that may mean you may be walking a lonely path in some seasons. It's true. And some people. And everybody can't handle themselves. walking. Yeah, everybody walking hasn't come to themselves with that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It takes time. Mm -hmm. Understood. Mm -hmm. And there are some times where he will strip you down of honey, of all of that. So oh, that yes. you don't have a choice but to face your your real self. The God does not say his grace lasts forever. It only mm -hmm. says his mercy endures forever. Sometimes I believe his grace runs out. <laughs> he does things to humble us when we are trying to maintain our fakery in every area of our lives. And God is like, let me put this side mirror 
let let me let me flip this mirror for you. Read the read what it say. What it say at the bottom. Okay. And sometimes he's like, oh, you don't want to show everybody who you are. Let me help you. Expose it. Yeah. Or or. And he exposes you. And he exposes you. Show in your authentic nakedness. <laughs> and and all you can do in that is say, okay, God. Mm, mm, mm. I'm standing under your grace right now because I need you to cover me because you didn't you didn't just strip me right. of all that I've been telling people that I am. Mm, mm, and I'm standing mm. in this authentic me. And all I got is you. And thankfully, that's all we need. <laughs> that's all we need. We don't need anybody's approval. We don't need anyone else's acceptance. My goodness. My goodness. Y'all put some feedback in these comments. Let us know what y'all think about this amazing topic of fakery and or all of the bedfellows of fakery. What we want to hear. We want to hear. Give us your feedback because we know you're experiencing these things in your life and you we know you've got people around you personally, professionally or otherwise. Could be you, but anywho, that might be dealing with this bedfellow. So please let mm -hmm. us know. Mm -hmm. Put in the comments. Mm -hmm. We want to hear some feedback. So, ladies, I know we we touched on this earlier, but what would I want to say? Would what could? Because there's still the possibility, right? Mm -hmm. What could the church or the body of Christ? What could it look like if no one was fake and everyone was their authentic, real, true mm -hmm. self? Mm -hmm. Did that just come out of your mouth. That's like so aspirational because I'm trying to fathom it. And to me, that is almost as fairy tale as Disney. Yes. Right? Yo, don't leave me out here like this, Apples. No, this no, no. no. It's it's real talk because that would have to come, that would have to come from the top I, down. In, think about in that. Church. It would have to, it would have to come from the top down. I can't right. fathom what that looks like, okay? Like, I can picture a unicorn before I can picture what that looks like. I'm just saying, because of experiences, I, I'm. you would have to help me tell us mm. what do you envision that looks like? Because I, I can't, in my mind, cognitively, I'm, I'm, there's a gap. I envision it being such an overflow example of God's love and grace and mm -hmm. acceptance, like Danielle said, right? Um, and embracing people right where they are in life. Yeah. You know, and that there being some there being someone there for every person that God sends that is willing to sit down with them and be like, yep, I was right where you were. Been there, done that, started mm -hmm. the t-shirt line. <laughs> right. You know, I pinned, I pinned the hashtag, like I, yeah, done all that. Mm -hmm. And this is, and this is how, and this is how God brought me through it. And these are some of the hurdles and the obstacles that I had along the way. Mm -hmm. And these were some of my meltdown moments. And these were some of my Kirk out moments where, yeah, I cussed a few people out. Yeah, I did that. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. But the, the, it would be, to me, I think it would almost be overwhelming, but in such a beautiful way. Because mm. it would truly be God's love in the earth. It would be his example of God's love in the earth. Hmm. It's what we're supposed to be anyway. It's we're the supposed truth. to be exact mirrors of his love in the earth. And to me, that's what it would be like. Wow. Danielle, I see your faces <laughs> processing. You're digesting, honey. What are you digesting? Well, you know, I'm I'm just a, a guest on the show today, but I don't want to get kicked off um, or oh, ran so. off the show. Never. But Bye. I really think that it would be very similar to like the LGBTQ plus community movement where it is 
a lot of love, a lot of acceptance, a lot of, um, like you said, there are, there's a different people and origins and just somebody for everybody. And there's no real, it doesn't have to be defined. It is just a movement of positivity and acceptance. And um, that's, I think like if it was actually tangible, hmm. then then it would be something of that magnitude where it, it it's not just a um, community, you know, here or statewide. It would have to be a monumental movement, not just on a, a you know, a, a, an area or specific East Coast, West Coast. It would have to be something and that's what it, I feel like that's what it would look like to the point of mm-hmm. it was just radiance of love and colors and beauty and it doesn't matter who you are where what background what ethnicity you know it is just um come as you are and it will be you know, there will be a place for you at the table at a seat at the table um, if, if that's really tangibly, if if we needed to, honey, to- I can. I, you you took it to left field and brought it back to center plate because I was like, where in the uh, is she going with this? Help me so, bridge the gap. So, but I, I take I take Danielle's comment and I raise it a notch. Okay, because I hear what she's saying and I love what she said, mm-hmm. but I raise it a notch to. Yes, it would be like that, the the welcoming, right, and the warmth, but at the same time, walking people to their healing and walking alongside people Mm -hmm. to their freedom. Yes. Not cooling them, not pushing them. (laughs) And non-denominational. Or or preaching to them from up here and they're down here. Right. But at the same time, taking that acceptance Mm -hmm. and saying, hey, I accept where you are in this season of your life. Yeah, Let's yeah. walk together for you to grow in God and grow in your understanding. And let's walk together for you to gain the freedom that is rightfully yours. Right. Mm-hmm. So that so that no one stays where they are, because that's, right. that's that's where I'm raising what you're saying. Raising yes. the bar just a bit is not yes. staying where you are, but we're going to walk alongside together. Mm-hmm. We're going to do this thing called life together and we're going to have real and transparent moments together you know that's good ladies that's good i i way to merge it together because i was i'm still back on fathom (laughs) Uh, (laughs) you're still back on disney world i'm still fathoming so that's where i am right there because experiences so i'm just i'm in fathom so way to bridge the gap and and to really kind of put some context of what you envision uh that that would look like and, and the characteristics of that. But the reality of the level of submission it would take for that. Mm. Mm. Not submission to man, but submission to God. That's why I'm back on Fathom and Unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> Join me there. That's more because, reality. Because we're so <laughs> selfish. We're so <laughs> selfish. So the level of submission it would take to Thank say, you. you know what, God? Help me to stand in in my truth of who I am, who you created me to be mm-hmm. um, in every moment of my life. Yeah. Right. The submit, I don't, I don't, sad to say, I don't ever see the submission of that happening on a global scale. That's tough. I feel like, I feel like if anything, it goes back to that scripture where it says now is the time for the true worshipers. Yes. Mm. yes. To worship him in spirit and, in, and truth. in truth. Correct. And so I believe God will be using a select some of us that are willing to mm. submit to that call. Yes. Of when he calls us to be authentic mm. <laughs> and real and relevant and transparent right. that no matter how much sometimes that hurts, that we mm. will do it. There's that. There's that. That's all I got to say. I'm a sip. <laughs> sip, honey. Sip. And those at home, sip. 
The fakeries oh, of it all. The fakeries of it all. Well, honey, it is Testimony Tuesday time. For those of you that are new to our show, please know that the show is on Tuesdays. No matter what day, you may be watching it. So you can put your <laughs> Testimony Tuesday in the comments. <laughs> ah, that was good, wasn't it? Okay. Put it in the comments. Let us know. Holla back. We'll we'll come. We'll respond to your comment. Trust me. We see them all. No matter when you watch the replay and catch it, we want to celebrate with you. So, um, so you all go because I'm determined to have two, and it doesn't matter that Tania only wants me to have one. So, whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, Danielle, I, I'll go ahead <laughs> since she's going to take up more time anyway. Um, for those um that that do know my journey, um, I have worked in financial aid and higher education for over um eleven years, and it has been my life. It has been my my home away from home. And it is definitely something um, that I am in, about to embark on in, a new journey. Um, and it is honestly the hardest decision I have ever had to make. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I know when you know, when you know it's God, like when you know it, you just, you, you are you submissive to it because um this new chapter that that God has blessed me with in this new job that I am going to be starting um, later on this month is truly God ordained. Mm -hmm. um, so I cannot wait to share what that new journey is um, in the future. And um, it is I have to breathe because it, it does take me a minute to even, you know, let it sink in and to enjoy it and to get excited about this new chapter. So that is my testimony Tuesday um, is that when when you know that that God is speaking and that he has a a new path and um, something greater, you, you just have to submit and be obedient. Oh, I've been hanging around you two for so long. Jesus. <laughs> Um, and just know that everything is gonna is, is everything is in his will. And um mm -hmm. I'm excited, I'm I'm getting excited, but it has honestly been the hardest decision I've ever had to make. So yeah. That's my Tuesday. Uh on to on to you. So good, babe. So good. I love it. I love it. Come on, Win. I have two. I know you do. One, one was Saturday. And for those of you that are watching this, again, this was Tuesday. And Saturday, we happened to have a great community event in which, yes, yes, it was an event for children. And yes, they dressed up. Again, judge yourselves. Okay. So it was great because we got there at the site and it was myself and one of my other colleagues. And amazingly, for setup, no one else had gotten there early okay um we're the only two and in my spirit man i was like there's no way we can do the grounds of this you know huge area we've got to set everything up for this fall festival for these kids uh and there's no way we're going to be able to make this you know happen with just you know us two people okay it's just not it's not possible logistically it's just not going to happen yes. um and when i tell you god shows up girl if it's not like God giving manna when you need it, okay? I kid you not, I can't make this stuff up. I'm standing there with my colleague and he's talking about how as he was unloading his pickup truck, his hand got caught in the midst of these trash barrels that he had and it, it kind of pinched his hand, okay? And then he couldn't really lift and do what he needed to do, okay? And so... I was like, dude, you know, what are we going to do, right? Like, seriously, between the two of us, how are we going to get this facilitated? Girls, up, rolls on a bicycle, okay? A gentleman who says to us, do y'all need some help? Now, I look at my colleague, do you, who this, who, Papa, who this, right? Who is this right. person that just rolled up? He was like, I don't know. I was like, sir, 
you know, yes. First of all, to answer your question, yes, yes. Um, what's your name, right? Where you come, you know, how'd you hear about this? Well, he said, I was just riding my bike. He said, actually, he was homeless. He stayed the night, the homeless shelter, put him up in a hotel mm-hmm. overnight. And because we had a huge storm, okay, the night mm-hmm. before. So they took as many that were homeless out of, you know, wherever sites that they were out on grounds and put them in permanent shelter. Okay. Okay. And so he said, let me go down the street to the hotel and, and pack my things up and check out and I will come back and I will stay with you all for the entire day. Now this was 9 AM. This man came back about 10, 10, 15. I mean, it wasn't long. Um, It was before 10 30. Um, stayed with us the entire duration, set up entire event, everything we needed help with. We were yelling his name. Okay. I mean, like yelling his name. Okay. He became one of my besties. Okay. Yelling his name, anything I needed help with. He said, anything you need, just call my name. I will be over here to help you. Okay. So I didn't have to worry about stressing, hurting myself. Okay. Yeah. End of breakdown. He was one of the last souls with us as we broke down after the event ended, okay? And so that was my testimony on Saturday, was that God sent an angel to roll up on a bike who is homeless, literally, though. He's telling us his story. Out out the blue. Come on, girl, with the out the blue, okay? And was strong enough in health condition enough, because let's just call that what it is, right? Right. To be able to do the functions that we needed him. We had hundred pound pumpkins that a farmer had donated. These pumpkins were bigger than the the, ball, the exercise balls that you sit on. These were pumpkins. We couldn't lift these things. This man hoiled these things up and took them where we needed. Look, we was ready to pack up. We had hay bales and these huge pumpkins left. And I said to the team, what are we going to do with all these extra hay bales and corn stalks and, and, and these huge, again, hundred pound pumpkins, honey, Black SUV rolled up, Florida license plates. I, you can't make this stuff up. Lady puts her window down, says, I was just riding by. She said, I told my husband when I before I left home, because he wasn't with her, that I'm going out to find fall festival decorations. He said, where are you going? Because again, they got Florida license plates. Where are you going? I don't know. Okay, remember like the one on Instagram, where are you go? I don't know. Kid you not, y'all. She rolls up into the parking lot, puts her window down. What are y'all going to do with this extra stuff? I turned to my team. We're going to give it to you. That's what we're going to do. I said, do. didn't I just ask y'all 10 minutes ago, what are we going to do with these huge, ginormous pumpkins and these bay hails? She said, oh, the bet. My SUV has rubber mats, the whole liner in the back. Put the seats down. I want I want the two huge pumpkins that was left. Who lifted them but the homeless man into her vehicle, okay? The hay bales and the corn stock. And I said, God, when you show your faithfulness to us, Okay. Not only was the blessing blessing the blessing that the blessing blessed the blessing. Okay. Now we don't have to figure out what we're going to do with this stuff. Okay. I was like the layers, the sovereignty, the strategicness of this chest of the whole day, the whole day, that day, it was about 10 different instances. Where when I got home that night and I wrote in my gratitude journal and I was just trying to process it all, I was mm-hmm. like, how? Like it was again, how? This ultimate how. So that was Saturday. Sunday, Sunday, we were all blessed to be able to go see Lecrae and Maverick City. If y'all ever get, if you when, look at the Maverick City tour, they're traveling the country, blah, blah, blah. And I loved during this three hour, three and a half hour in the huge arena in Virginia. Nothing but people of all ages, stages, I mean, okay, worshiping. And they stopped. And she said, how many of you have not, how many of you, is this your first worship, corporate worship experience in a building since the pandemic? When I tell Mm -hmm. you thousands of hands are raised and I was like, God, Mm -hmm. you use this to bring us right back together because so many of us haven't been in a building and 
not just haven't been in the building, but who has had corporate worship with Chandler Moore and Maverick City on that level of worship, first of all, let's just be very real, okay? Right. Um, for three and a half hours, we're together. It's about 3, 3.15. And I just thought, oh my goodness gracious, when she mentioned it, it just brought to my mind, like, thank you, God, for using everything. Nothing is wasted. And even though we might not have been in the building, a, a traditional building, right? Again, tradition, we're done with it. Right. This was, I was like, God, thank you for allowing this to be my first corporate worship experience since February of 2020. And it is November, right? That was, that was, that was October 31st, literally of 2021. And so having a year and a half of not being back in the building, having corporate worship and allowing that experience to be corporate worship with, I don't know, probably at least 10,000 other people. Mm. And to feel the presence of God in that place, that arena, I can't even begin to tell you. Like literally, it just rested. It rested. And I was like, oh my God, like, we feel it on Sundays coming through the TV, but honey, in the atmosphere, oh my star. So those are my two testimonies was this weekend. Uh, God's sovereignty and both days was amazing. So my question to you real quick is, did you ever see the homeless man again? I did not. And so here's the concern that I had is that he wanted me to take his number. <laughs> He wanted me to take his number, Danielle, fix your face. Uh, he kept telling me, he was like, you're so beautiful. And I was like, thank you, sir. He's like, uh, uh, he said his birth, he said his birthday was on Monday, which would have been yesterday. He was like, I really would have, I would love, I would love if maybe we could, you know, go out to eat or get together or, you know, just to be able to celebrate. And I was like, sir, I thank you for all your help today. But that's where we have to live that. We can't, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't be, yeah, though. Sorry, I apologize. I, I don't know what to tell you, but I just, yeah. But yeah, he wanted to go out and hang out. He was a loving older man. Let me tell you, wonderful. God sent, but God had to see him. Yeah, God had to see him. Yeah, it was it. it was, appreciate you. God bless you um, for being used and allowing yourself to be used. But, but yeah, we can't, uh, unless God directs me, to find his number from one of the colleagues who he gave his information to mm -hmm. and to take him out and bless him for a meal. I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. God was not leading me to do that yes. as a female by myself at that time. No. So everything, I had to, everything in obedience. I had to listen and to obey. And as much as that might have been his request <laughs> more than one time, I had to govern myself accordingly. <laughs> Because again, y'all, I was in my go-go outfit, my go-go dancer outfit, uh, because it was it was Halloween and govern, you know, judge yourselves. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> seven inch heels, brother man was like, Can we go out for my birthday? No, sir, we can't. We can't. But I pray that God bless you on your birthday. Wherever you are, sir, I pray that you have a I pray that yesterday was the most blessed birthday you've ever had. So who can Um so, That's why you, you should have made me go last. <laughs> no, no, it was perfect. It was perfect. Mine is just me truly being so thankful for embracing where God has me in my life. Mm. For me embracing that and being free to walk in that. Um in me being okay with not having every step of my path being lit ahead for me ahead of time, mm -hmm. but me being able to just walk out day to day in faith of, okay, God, what is your plan for me today? Right. You know, and, and being okay with that, you know, that it, mm -hmm. that I don't have a title behind my name or under my name, right? Um, that no, I'm not working in corporate America anymore, but that doesn't mean I'm not working because mm. I'm working for the CEO, the Damn. 
CEO, you know, and just being so thankful that that is my life. Um, thankful that he blessed me with a man of God that supports that yes. obedience walk in this season. And shout out to, to shout the out to the man of God. Shout, shout out, out to him because I know he's watching. Bless his, man bless of God. his heart. Um, and to just always have his support and encouragement. And that is just my testimony. You know, mm -hmm. being able to for God to give me a platform to even share what that looks like. Yeah. With Mama Sanchez the other week. And and just being okay with that, like being really thankful mm -hmm. that <laughs> I don't, you know, my life doesn't look like anybody else's right now. And that is okay. My life looks how it's supposed to look right now. And God will keep being God. And God will keep being the I am God in every area that I need him to be. Mm -hmm. Whatever I need him to be, he's going to keep being that I am as long as I keep being willing to be the vessel. So that is my, that is my truly mm -hmm. testimony and just gratitude. Mm -hmm. Just that the heart of gratitude. That's it. Because it took me, it took me a while to get to this, mm -hmm. this place. This is me being transparent and me not being fake. It took me a while to get mm -hmm. to this place emotionally, yes. yeah. mentally, and spiritually to get to this place where it's like, there's mm -hmm. no, <laughs> I don't have an exact definition for what this is. Obedience. That's all it is. If somebody asks, I'm like, I'm just being obedient. That's literally been my answer. Correct. It's like, so yeah. what are you doing? I'm being obedient. Correct. I'm being, I'm obedient. being obedient and I'm minding my business because I'm about my business. That should be it. I'm about my father's business, as Jesus said. I'm about my father's business. So I'm being Thank obedient you. in this season. Thank you. And that's all I can tell you. Yes. And what that's, more, and that's more than enough. That's more to be very real. That's all more day. than enough. All day. All day. And being okay with that answer. Correct. For not, myself. Feeling like you, not feeling like you have to even justify it to oh, no. yourself. Not more or less anyone mm -hmm. else. But even to, within yourself. Exactly. Right. To say, you know what? I'm being obedient and I don't need to justify this to myself because sometimes mm -hmm. y'all it's not even other people that that's it's correct. about within sometimes the, the biggest battle is within yes and i know for me the biggest battle has been within because mm -hmm. i've always had a title i've always had something under my name of this is what i do this mm -hmm. is what i've been doing it's like mm, no i just want to put now under my name obedient vessel <laughs> i just want to sign everything that way Listen, Tania Easterling, obedient vessel. That trumps that trumps every title I know. So I mean, honestly, I mean, it's been the it's been the it's been the most blessed title. Mm. It's mm. been the most blessed title. It's been the biggest blessing on my life having the that title. effect. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because obedience is contagious. Really. <laughs> Well, yeah, is ask it, Danielle. Is it now? Look, ask Danielle. Obedience. Is it now? Do tell. Do tell. <laughs> no, that's another episode. That's a different episode. Right. We yeah. This, this has already been a lot for, for our listeners to process today. So, so well, we, we love that you were here with us, y'all. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Danielle, for joining us tonight. All your input mm -hmm. was so good. Thank you for the multitasking because I know you were posting stuff while you're conversating. So we appreciate that. And um, like when and I always say, you can still post your comments, even if you're yes. watching this on replay. Next week, we will be right back here at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central mm -hmm. for another real and relevant conversation. And we'll let you know what that is. We'll post it. We're going to post it. We're going to let it. We're going to let tonight yes. marinate for a while. Surprise. We're gonna let you might marinate for a while. Watch mm -hmm. this over again. Mm -hmm. Like we said, whether you agree, disagree, we love it all. Put it in those comments. We want to have hear. a conversation. Yes. And let's have a conversation. Keep sharing. We appreciate every share. And uh we'll see y'all next mm -hmm. week. Until then, take care. Keep Let's listening. Care. Keep on listening.
แต่ว่า